there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. On Salvage Hunters, <laughs> Drew visits a Welsh castle in Glamorgan. So this is our old kitchen. Look at this. Yes, this is oh rather special. Oh, my word. And is tempted by a rare antique. Can we get this in the van? <laughs> <laughs> At a girls' school in Somerset, there's a huge difference of opinion on price. £1,000? Definitely not. Give you 500 quid for it and no more. And at a slate mine in Gwynedd... This you'll see here is the angle of the slate bed. ..he hits the jackpot with a huge Victorian collection. This is an entire chemistry. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's an absolute gem. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Look at that statue there. It's over 2,000 years old. No. In his hunt for treasure... No, nope, we're going to keep those. ..everything has its price. I'll give you £500 for them. Yeah, I'll take that. And there's nothing he won't buy. <laughs> you wouldn't buy that, would you? Just watch, just watch us. With help from his wife, Rebecca... You do what you do, and I'll do the selling here, then. ..and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. In Conwy, North Wales, top salvage expert Drew Pritchard is heading out on the road in search of new stock. First on the agenda is a visit to a medieval Welsh castle. It's a 200-mile drive south to the Vale of Glamorgan and the seaside town of Barry, just outside Cardiff. Right, T. Uh -huh. And we're off to see Fonmon Castle. It's an ancient castellated building that was sort of aggrandised, I think, mainly in the early Georgian period, sort of turned from a castle to a residence. We are going to meet Sir Brooke Boothby okay. and his daughter, Aliki. Well, I'm Brooke Boothby. I'm now retired, having handed over the castle to my daughter. Um, I'm Aliki Karimji, um, Brooke's daughter, and I'm recently taking up the reins here at Fonmon. Fonman Castle was first erected in the 12th century. Most of the present-day castle was rebuilt and converted into a Georgian mansion in the 1700s. But a fortified tower erected in the 13th century still remains today. In its 800-year existence, the castle has only been owned by two families. Things go into this house, they disappear for a generation, and then they perk up and somebody goes, What's that? And then we all have to have a sort of family country hunt to work out what it was. Now, today could be good. Exciting. Fantastic. Here you go. Fonmon. Fon -mon. Private castle and grounds by appointment only. No oh, drews. Uh, no hawkers. No hawkers shysters. or shysters. I'll just turn about Boot around. Yeah. <laughs> we reverse that, have you? <laughs> <laughs> it's really chunky. That's it in is. your face, isn't it, that one? I like it. And that's the courtyard suitably cluttered. Hello there. Welcome. Hi, Drew. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hi, I'm T. So Brooke. <laughs> Hello, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, sir. Hi, Fabulous you place. Thank you very, very much. Very nice, very nice. Well, we've got a beautiful day for it, it's so lovely. that's a start. Ooh. Yeah. OK, <laughs> well, let's go and have a look. I'll do. Oh, it's lovely. So is this, are these all the ancestors? Yes, they are. This is uh, Philip Jones, who originally bought the castle and then uh, through the ancestors to Robert Jones, who actually was the one who opened everything up and turned it into a sort of Georgian gentleman's residence rather than a, a gloomy old fortress. Is that by Sir Joshua Reynolds? Yeah. It is, yes. Sir Joshua Reynolds was a leading portrait painter in the 18th century and was one of the founders and first president of the Royal Academy. He completed over 3,000 works of art in his lifetime. We've got Reynoldses here that are good, like that one. Yeah. We've got Reynoldses which are not quite so good. We've got Reynoldses which are copies, <laughs> and we've got one which we think may be a fake altogether. Um, so we're not quite all sure. All interesting. Yeah. yeah. Quite, everybody, I bet everybody goes, can I see the fake? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what they usually do, don't they? 
Well, it looks great. I'd love to see some more of it. Absolutely. So where, where to next? Why don't we go and take a look at um, the library? I think it would be interesting to see, and maybe the old kitchen. Yes, please. Which right. way? Follow us. This is our old kitchen, um, which you can see we use as a dining room now. Ooh. Um, look at this. Yes, this is oh, rather special. Oh, my word. It's a single slab of elm, uh, dating from... Uh, around 1660, it was all wow. put together when the room was built. God, that's amazing. Um, and we believe that the feet are actually oak. This is fantastic. It's great, isn't it? God. Can um. we get this in the van? <laughs> 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 not, not without me being, being arrested by the, the police. Yes, of course. I'm not sure that one opens. Yeah, it all that open. one doesn't. The rest do. These open. Yeah. What a thing. An incredible one single slab of timber put there for that just for that purpose, and then with those incredible tripod bases. You're not going to see those. You might wander around the country for a couple of years before you see one of those. What well, more, please? Love to see some more. All right. Some more what? Some of more the, of the building. Oh, oh please, I yes. thought you said more police. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> no, 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 not, not after this morning, no. this <laughs> Only when we try and steal your, uh, your elm. Oh, wow. Look this. Is at this. <gasps> Gorgeous, wow. What a wonderful room. But this plasterwork's phenomenal. I'll tell you what I really like in the plasterwork. See this sort of very... Uh, the foliage there? Yeah, with yeah. The, That looks so natural. Yes. When they were doing that, they even used to put pieces of branch in there and they'd put natural pieces inside oh, really? them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. When we went into the library, that was two rooms that had been knocked through into one to create a very airy and light room because, remember, no electric lights in this period would have been candles uh, and the fire. That would have been it. And then the natural light coming through the windows. What a wonderful thing, down here in Barry in South Wales. Next, they head to the attic, where a leaky hopes some of the items cast aside in the long history of the castle might be hiding. Wow. Oh, look at this. But you can see, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's cast work and, and panelling up here, so evidence... <laughs> Thank right. you. Wow, look at this, T. Um, so, oh, in there, to... there's a pile of all sorts of... Of stuff. Of stuff. <laughs> I don't know if any of it's of interest. So watch with God, this is amazing. It's a proper old castle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Um, there's two panels. I have no idea what they are Ooh, and where they're. Those they there? From. Yes. And there's one behind you, and nobody seems to really know their provenance. So you probably have They don't match anything in the building? No. Nothing at all. No. Which is why they're stuffed up here. These are really nice. These are carved and gilded and painted. Gothic, as in pure Gothic, pilasters in oak English. Ooh. Nice. Dating from? These looking like they are 18th century. Gosh. There's nothing Gothic in the house. That's what's no. so odd. So whether they were an acquisition that Robert Jones made and abandoned, who knows? Uh, they look ecclesiastical. Yes. But also in this period, ah. they could have... Did he, did he have a church you pulled We had down? a chapel. The gent's toilet was a chapel. That's oh, interesting. That will be where they came from. They're really beautiful as well. That's Wouldn't take much to put these it right. Was, it was a chapel. I mean, just flat on a wall. Look at that. Wow. Fantastic. Look at this. Look at the intricacy of the carving. Yeah. This is the real deal. And very, very nicely done as well. That interesting? God, they're beautiful. They're complete and they're untouched. I want to buy them. I don't think you should sell them to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, well, I think what you've just told me means I probably shouldn't. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If, if you think these are original to the house... Well, that seems to me the logical conclusion, because I know that, the, the, rather unpoetically, the gent's toilet was the, uh, was the chapel, so I can only presume that they came from there. They go to test out their theory that the Gothic panels belong to the old chapel. Right, now the exciting bit. Fingers crossed this fits. We got it upside down. Oh, but right, be okay. very careful, it's trying to come apart from the middle. Okay. Oh, this fits. Right, so we're in the loo <laughs> of the tower. Yeah, we're in the tower toilet here. But I think that's pretty good. Oh, you beauty, look at that. Look at that. 
So it's just missing a tiny piece yeah, from there. A tiny yeah. bit jump and if we could find marks in the wall. They're probably behind that secondary glazing. Oh, yeah. You've got I'm another piece there, too. That's the right yeah. Yeah. Now we'll see if there's any more of it missing, because I think off one of them there's a section missing off the side as well. Oh. But there would have been a frame. Yeah. Do you know what? They're absolutely dead on, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah. yeah. That's super. These old bits of panel have turned out to be something really remarkable. And uh, it, it, I think that's what interests me so much about the antiques world, is I was able to go in and recognise them. Having returned the panels to their rightful home, but without a purchase, it's off to see if the stables might elicit something for Drew to buy. So there's various bits of furniture in here, full of unloved furniture, I'm afraid. It's OK. And one the recycling bins. I don't know if there's anything in here. Let's just, just do them room by room. room. Ah, you've got a knoll sofa. Ah, OK. Yes, I like those. Unfortunately, it being out here is not going to have done it the world of good. Oh, yes, that sort of sofa. Was this Nars sofa? No. I don't like it. I people think it was people in... like them or loathe them, don't they? The I like them. I really do like them. See if you've got... Yeah, you've got decent cushions with it as well. Aliki and I go and have a look through some of the other outbuildings, and these are full of furniture that is way past its sell-by date and now damp, and none of it was really any good when it went in there anyway. That's the reason it's in there. Um, nothing that I can do anything with. Condition's not great. Nothing I really want. No, nope. none of this. No, Frog. right, no. no, I did think this was the sort of... Bottom. This is the bit the bottom Next of the... Next door one. Pile, I'm afraid. We haven't done very well for you. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I've, uh, my, my day was made by finding those panels. Oh, well, my <laughs> day was made by you finding those panels, I'm afraid. <laughs> I like this. Where did this you? come from? I have no idea. Do you know? Been there for a long not time. A, it's not... A, it hasn't got a great deal of age to it, but it's probably 100 years old, max. Little oak, Spanish. Saito. Quite like it. This oak table with hand-carved detailing was made in England in the early 20th century. With major restoration, it could fetch around 700 pounds. That's a really difficult one. It needs about 300 quid spending on it to get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's worth... Uh, then it's worth 250. <laughs> it's worth about six maximum. <laughs> so it's, uh, mm. it's, it's a tricky one, really, to see whether there's a margin in it. Um, it's, 100, it's 100 quid too. A salvage hunter, Drew Pritchard, is at Fonman Castle in Glamorgan. Oh, it's lovely. He's just offered £100 on this 20th century oak table. But is it enough to tempt a leaky to part with it? I was going to say it was 150 quid. I can't even go that far on it. I mean, in all honesty, for 100 quid, I think I'll probably keep it. Yeah? Yeah, sorry. Okay. I just think yeah. for 100 quid, I'd rather keep it. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is. So far today, we haven't found anything. Uh, I thought I was going to fairly easily. Lots, big house, been here forever, loads of outbuildings. Thought, you know, game on. Just right, this is the last bit, so there's not a lot in here. So um, the only things I thought you might be interested in were. Now, this is a personal matter of taste. I quite like these, I think they're quite sweet. Yes. But I have not got the energy to do anything with them. Right. So you might have the energy to do something with them. I think they're quite sweet too. Oh, good. I do. Okay. I think, I do you want to get they're... them out and have a close yeah. look? Where did these come from, though? Oh, They've very been good here question. forever. No, no, they appeared from somewhere. They're French. Yes, I think they came from my grandmother. Quite they're in a bit of a state, aren't they? They that are a bit. That's from. why I thought they were more dear than me because I, you know how to sort them out. Put them back together again. This French painted iron patio set features four open armchairs, a large dining table, and small side table. It dates back to the early 20th century. With major restoration, it could fetch around £900. These are quite cute. They're I a bit they're girly for me. Yeah. But, the but for a great. small London type garden. Yeah, I could just sell these. I've got a shop in the top floor of Liberty, and these would go. Oh, right, okay. These would go well there. The colour's good. And they're commercial. That's what they are. They're very saleable. So I'm thinking, right, we've got four chairs, side table, outdoor dining table, rock and roll. We can sell these all day long. Easy. What would you want for them? Whose are they? What are you... Well, they are actually my mother's. OK. 
Um, That's so. all right. Flog them. Tenner. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll have to ask. We'll have to ask. Have to, um, have to ask her. I will have to ask her. OK, well, I'll, I'll throw out a bid. All so, right. Uh, um, uh, uh, two two five. The set. Okay. Do you want to have a word? See if we've yes, been... I will need to call Mum if that's all right. Right. Good news. The mother, she say yes. Great. But, but. I knew there was a but coming. Yeah. <laughs> the mother being Greek. Yeah. Would like a little more than two twenty five. What would you like? Two fifty. Yes. We'll have a deal. There you go. We'll deal. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Very good. There Great. you go. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> right, pretty good. We bought one thing, it will pay for the diesel, for the hotel, for our time. Bit of profit, that's it. But again, good connection. They'll tell their friends. I'll get called into another house eventually. You know, I'm not going to stop doing this. It's a, it's a walk, not a race. Wait, check this one. Thank you very much. I'm, for one, absolutely delighted about the discovery. Uh, Drew made of, of the uh, shutters as we've now worked out them to be. Um, that's for us a major find. It's part of the collection that we've obviously mislaid and overlooked over the years. Well, thank you so much and have a safe journey to the next place. Yeah. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I would have auctioned her off to you as well, but she's got my granddaughter on board. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know which it is. <laughs> I've, I've got three girls in my life. I don't need any more. <laughs> thank you. See have ya. a safe drive. Oh, a lovely day. Super day. Those panels were something special, though, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, they were, they were a strange one, right? They really were a strange one. But they belong there, don't they? But, yeah, it doesn't matter. Value doesn't matter when it's that. That's important to the history of that place. And then them saying, it just all literally went click, click, click and just fell yeah. into place, didn't it? So, yeah, it is what it is, and I have to go, well, actually, that's really genuinely interesting. And I do believe in the whole antique karma thing. I do think it works. Mm -hmm. Works for me. Well, are we going to head home or are we going to...? I think, basically, we'll head south, side of country, and uh, we've got a couple of bits to see down there, and we'll do that. Next morning, Drew and T head 85 miles southeast to Bruton in Somerset. Bruton is situated on the River Brew and is home to the 12th century Church of St Mary. It's a long way south today. Yep, we're down in the beautiful county of Somerset and we're off to Bruton School for Girls. And uh, it's just coming to the end of term now and they're having a bit of a, a clear out, so we'll see. Bruton School for Girls is a day and boarding school first established in 1900. It's set in 40 acres of grounds with 17 buildings and has 300 pupils in attendance. I'm Alan Wells and I'm the estates bursar here at Bruton School for Girls and it's my job to make sure the facilities are in place for the teachers to do their job. We have many items here um, which are redundant and have no longer got a, a use in the school. And, and this is an ideal opportunity for someone like Drew to come and have a look, see what we've got, see if there's anything he can do with the items that we've got and upcycle them or sell them on. Hello, Alan. Hello. Hi, Drew. Hello, mate. Nice to meet you. And you. Yeah, and you. Good. And tea. Hi, tea. Please meet you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having us. It's frankly boiling and oh. beautiful down here. Yeah, I know. We brought some Let's, stuff, so. yeah. Let's hope it's Everywhere stays. we go. Yeah. Like a yeah. little, I brought my little ray of sunshine with me. <laughs> Is that a ray of sunshine? <laughs> well, yeah, well, for Wales, yeah. yeah. Um, right, I'd love to have a look around. Yeah. Well, let's go this way, shall we? Yes, please. God, it's going to be hot, isn't it? Yeah. First stop is the school's art department. As yeah. you can see on the walls, very big on art. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? Yeah, not bad. The students work, obviously. Mm. When you think some of it's only 13-year-olds doing this it's art. It's very good. This is oh, one this of got a great room. One of our art classrooms. But I brought you in here because I thought you might be interested in some of our old wooden stools and chairs. Yes, most definitely. This type. These, I'm Sorry. always after. How many have you got? <sighs> How many can you take? As many as you've got, I'll buy. These solid maple laboratory stools were made in England in the 1960s 
and come in a variety of heights and shapes. They're very handy in restaurants and bars, and if they're bought in bulk, they will be much more saleable. Each one is worth around 70 pounds. Old school lab stools. They're hugely popular, they sell quickly, there's never generally a massive amount of restoration work to them, and we've usually got customers waiting for batches. Price-wise, um, we need to talk, really. Yeah. Th these, this type here, yep. least attractive, yep. tricky to sell. Yep. They are what they are, 15 quid a stool. Right. Through to this type here, 25 quid a stool, and the other stuff, other stuff is middle ground. Right. Is what we pay. Which is where I thought you would come in at. And it's going to be where I stick at yeah. as well, because these are not items that we're not going to get offered yeah. again. We will get offered right. another couple of batches this okay. year. And we keep things easy. Yeah. I'd say 18 quid a stall across the board. Yes. That's the deal, then. Let's do that. Cheers, I'll take Rick. a lot. No, that's Thanks. fine. Are you happy with that? I'm happy with that. That's going to work really well for both of us. He's going to clear the lot. I'll do better on some than others, but across the board, we'll both do well. And in the next corridor, something else catches Drew's eye. These I like. You like these? Yeah. Well, they are for sale if you're interested. The art master is prepared to release some of them. I know he wants to keep about five. OK. I'll have to move a couple yeah, of bits yeah, of artwork. Yeah, certainly. Obviously, I'm going to try and find, being honest with you, the, yeah. the most original ones, which are clearly sure these, you will. One, this one's, these ones down here. Yeah. These are fab. These are really good little things. They are enigmatic. They're interesting. You look at them and you think, oh, yeah, I just want to paint, or I just want to lean my painting I've got against that. It's different to an easel. It's more artistic than hanging something on a wall. They look cool, and they're in lovely condition, untouched, Few paint splatters on them, apart from that, absolutely fab. These oak are trestle easels, were made in England circa 1900. With little restoration, they could fetch around £250 each. What sort of market would you have for these? Um, these would go to somebody fashion retail, I think. Think right, would probably be best for these. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking at them and thinking, right, great. Uh, instead of an artwork, a mirror. Right, yes, yeah. I see, yeah. Um, yeah. Something like that. But also, they're just nice little objects, aren't they? Oh, they are, yeah. I will take some of them yeah. with, with, with paint on it happily. So just say those five there. So you want five? Yeah. So what are we looking at price-wise? Um, how... how uh, I was going to say 45 quid each. Or I was going to say 50. Oh. That's fine. 50. That's 50 quid. There you go. Cheers, Drew. That's what I was hoping Great. you were going to say. I was, I was going to say, yeah. I was thinking of 45, but I'll give you yeah. 50. So we're no, on I, the button. I'd already those. written down 50 pounds <laughs> on my <laughs> piece of paper. And yeah. Uh, yeah, spot on the money. Alan is very good on his prices. He's sort of on the nail every time. He knows what everything's worth. I know what I can pay. Fine. Grown up, proper guy who's doing his job very professionally. Yeah, down here, Drew, is um, our understage. Um, you have to mind your head, it's quite low in here. Luckily, the lights are working today. Um, oh God, we're right under the stage, aren't we? We are, right. This is actually the floor of the main hall <laughs> above us. Ah, so th these lamps? Yeah. Yes. These are, are sort of standard with us, like, oh, OK, they, tick, lamps. We do get off them because, obviously, you've upgraded. Yes. So these come out, and they usually come out in sort of 10, 20, 30, and 40 was the most I ever bought That's from one right, place. That's right, yeah. Because um, they just changed the whole lot over. Yeah. They're actually quite attractive, though, on the... Uh, yeah. Which model are these? They're the Strand. Which one, T? 23s. That's 23s, right. yeah. 23s. We went underneath the stage area, and then there, there was some theatre lights, and that is something that we're offered constantly. Used to really like buying them. Wish I could buy those ones. They're a great example, but I'd just be putting them in a pool with thousands of others for sale in the country now, and unfortunately, I would not be able to sell them. So, great item, perfect condition. Probably get them for the right price. Can't sell them. These, unfortunately, are going to be a no today. OK, that's fine, thanks, Drew. Maybe f four or five years ago when we were buying them and nobody else was really doing yeah. them en masse, but now they're just everywhere. Everyone's copying you. Well, no, 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 nothing's new. When yeah. I was doing it, it wasn't new. Right, you know, so yeah. it's... Uh, it's, um, yeah. okay. it's a shame, cos they're in really good condition. Well, should we go and find somewhere else to look yeah, at? Yeah, please. Uh. Oh. Oh, that's better. Oh. 
Next, Alan takes them across the school campus to see if there's more salvage in the garages. Uh, number three, we've got a couple of items that might be of interest to you, Drew. A novel hinged I'm garage thinking, door. Yeah. Oh, hello. Look at that. You're not talking about this, are you? Well, does that interest you? Yeah. Yeah. Even in the state it's in? It's in a bad way, yeah. It's in a bad way. It's had a hard life. Um, we acquired a boarding house uh, around about 1940s. And it was on top of the boarding house, right on the gable end. Yeah. And when they converted it to boarding accommodation, it was thought that it was a bit dangerous up there. And it so, somebody. so it was taken down and it was thrown in the bushes behind a garage. Interesting. This late 19th century weather vane is made of cast and wrought iron. It features a full bodied rooster complete with ball and directional arrow and could fetch around 1,200 pounds. If the condition's not great, that will really affect it. Yeah. Head missing is a major pain. Go on, then. Right, you've been very good at your prices so far. What do you yeah. want for this one? It's got to be worth top end. Which is? £1,000. Definitely not. Definitely not. No. Salvage Supremo Drew Pritchard is at Bruton School in Somerset. Bridge door. Oh, hello. Look at that. He's keen to buy a 19th century weather vane. But bursar Alan Wells has started the bid at £1,000. I think it's worth repaired. Yep. 1,200 quid. Yep. Max. Yep. Max. Hmm. This condition, I'm going to bid you really quite hard on this. OK. I'm going to on, give then. you 500 quid for it and no more. I know. I know you think it's worth a lot more. But because of the manufacturing method, it's just cast. Yep. Uh, it's not as exciting. No. It's also had some period repairs over here with lead solder joints, so that means structurally it's got some issues. That's broken. Yep. And the head. So it's yep. got all those things which the collector yep. is going to look at and go, I'll wait and get a better one. Yeah. That's, that's being honest with you. Would you go to six? Meet you halfway, 550, and that would be it. 550, yeah. Drew. OK, thank you very much. It will have a good home. The cockerel is an unusual item, fresh to the market, that we could get lucky on or we might not. It's one of those, but it's different. That will go its own way. We'll see what happens with that. That's going to be an unknown. Oh, ah, cool, they are the right size. Oh, you're happy with them, Andrew? Yeah, they can see there's a few different sizes, but that's great, yeah. Uh, 70 in total. It was definitely worth coming down here today. I've got bulk, what you want from the school, a big stack of things that will sell well. And doing deals with Alan was perfect because I think he had a very good idea of what things were worth beforehand and done his homework and knew what I was going to spend on everything. Uh, so it became a fairly straightforward business. Oh, we're done. Thank you so much, Sean. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Nice really to meet enjoyed you. It. Thanks for the business. No, anytime. Great. Thank thanks. you, Alan. See you. Thank bye you. Bye. See you. Bye. Super. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted from a school clearance. The best things there, I think, to be honest, was those superb little artist easel stands. Well, Rebecca will be happy because we've got a good full van. That is, that is not bad at all, actually, is it? Yeah. It's not bad at all. Hello, hello. Oh. Hello. How are you doing? Hey. Where have you been? We've been down the West Country. Yeah. Somerset. Somerset. And it was very, very nice. Absolutely fantastic. And we went to the yes. Bruton School for Girls. Bruton School for Girls. And we did very well, thank you very much. Uh-oh. Our first exhibit for the day. Painting easels. Oh, yes. How nice are these? These are fantastic. Oak. Early 20th century, 1910, somewhere around there. Beautiful construction. How many you have like that. Uh, oh, five. Well. So you put your painting on there, put your pot in there, off you go. How nice. 50 quid a pot. How nice. And then we got 73 school stools. These All are this? the sort of, yeah. Oh. And better. Brilliant. We've none left. Have we? No. Right size. We haven't got any. We haven't got Have any we? left. No. no. You sold them all? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. I can sell these sort of lab stools day in, day out. And actually, 
um, a majority of them had lovely shaped seats, which is quite unusual. Last item off the van is the 19th century weather vane. I love it. Do you really? I really do. Mm. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. If so it was it mine, looked nice on top of Pritchard Towers, actually. No. Nope. No. <laughs> that means I've got to put it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Before long, Drew is back on the road. But for a change, it's a short journey and only a 20-minute drive from Conwy to Gwynedd, near the industrial town of Blynau Festiniog, which was built in 1750 to house the workers from the local slate mine. It's, it's kind of a man-made landscape, isn't it, really? That's what I like about Blynau Festiniog. A lot of people do it down and say, oh, it's horrible, it's ugly. It's not. It's not. It's the product of a... Of man, we've created it. Yeah, look at it. Everywhere you look is slate. I mean, is that a mountain or is that slate? My name's Michael Buick and I'm a director of JW Graves and Sons Limited, the company that's been working here since 1836. Lequard Slate Caverns has been an active slate mine since Victorian times. And at its peak, it produced almost 24,000 tonnes of slate per year. When the demand for slate declined, the owners opened the mine as a tourist attraction in the 1970s. Today, visitors can tour the underground mine, go mountain biking, and even take zip lining tours through the quarry. But not every tourist venture has been successful. One of the general managers who was here came up with the idea of, why don't we use these little buildings that we've got here and create a sort of Victorian village for people to experience? And I think it might be fair to say that he was a bit of a collector. So he started this process and then went off and did something else. And so what we ended up with was some Victorian village and an awful lot of stuff in some rooms. I've got a call from a guy called Michael. He's a friend of a friend. Right. And uh, they came to see me at the shop and said, um, we've got a shop interior we want to get rid of. It just sounded great, shop interior on the doorstep. I don't know what it is. Shop interior. So here we go. The signs for Zip World. Sequent Sake Taverns. <laughs> Stay back. Come on. Wait. Yeah. Boy. Hello. Morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? Hello there. I'm Michael. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. you. Hello there. Hello yeah. to you. Good to see you. You've got the full compliment today. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Enzo. Hello, Enzo. Oh, Good there you go. He likes you. It's marvellous. It's up to you to decide which smells the worst. Who's <laughs> <laughs> got the worst manners? <laughs> so far, he's behaving really well. Yeah, yeah. I promise um, I won't pee on the building. <laughs> <laughs> he will. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take you for a quick look at the mine. Okay. Because, as you know, we've got a sort of slate mine here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have a look at that and then and then get stuck in, I guess. Yes, please. Smash I'd it. love to. I've never... I've lived here for 40-odd years. And you've never been? Never no. been down the mine. Extraordinary. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? That's really naughty. I know. So, we're now about to travel on the Seapies Passenger Railway in Britain, which is going to take us over 100 feet down into the mine where we can see how the Victorian slate mine has worked. Underground, here we go. Ooh, cosy. She's compact. Certainly oh. is. There you go, you can fit oh. in there nice and snug. Oh. 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 How far down have we got? Uh, about 150 feet. And then there's another level below that, and then below that there are five levels, all of which are submerged. Going down in the mine, I couldn't say no to Michael. What I forgot to tell him was I really don't like going down in things like that. Yeah, you can feel, feel cool there, can't you? Cold and damp. That was some commute, that, wasn't it? Once I got down there, I got to the bottom, and I, all I kept doing was looking up to see the light behind me all the time. And just before I went into the mine, I had to walk back and look back up at the lights to sort of make myself all right about it. It was really odd. Quite steep. I have walked down it before now. <laughs> So, welcome to the mine, gentlemen. Where you are here would have been being um, dug out in the 1850s and 60s by men working with hand tools and gunpowder. This, you'll see here, is the angle of the slate bed through the mine. So, throughout the mine, you'll see the seam of slate. Same angle. Going at that angle, exactly. 
So beneath us here, there's one more level for the visitors. Men with shovels Whoa, and picks. Oh, look at that. Here we are. So here's wow. one of the chambers, dug out by hand it's in the amazing. 19th century. Oh, my God. The noise you're hearing is the noise that you would have heard if you were here of all the trundling of the wheels and the sound of the hammers and that sort of thing. We've got that running as a backdrop. So they did this all by hand? All of this was dug by hand. I think it does bring the reality home that he was telling us entire families would spend 20 or 30 years working in one cavern. Grim, tough, and I'm glad I don't have to do it. I've been down here, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. Quite keen to get out of it. Safely back above ground, it's time to get down to business. If, if you follow me up here, we're going to go and look in one of the stores that we've got. This one's over the old Miner's Arms pub. I, I think you're going to get quite excited. Ooh, where did this lot come from? One of my predecessors had the idea of creating a sort of Victorian village here, which um, they sort of half started. And we put a few bits on display, but to be honest, um, this stuff is all, all surplus to what we need. So this is an entire chemist shop? This is an entire chemist shop. This is great. I'm very pleased. Excellent. And so, you want rid of it? Yeah, no, well, because, you see, our, our plan is to keep hold of all of the slate-related stuff. So anything that's to do with the history of slate mining or quarrying, that yep. we want to hold on to. But, you know, we're, we're not a history of chemist shops. So there's some great pieces in here. We've got a shop counter there two verticals. This, which is the till, which I absolutely love. Oh, that was a till? Yeah, look. Oh, wow. Thank God, isn't that amazing? Yeah, fantastic. Well, if not, if not the till, it's the uh, very I exciting am. stuff, this. I've only actually been in here once before. There's just... This is epic stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. So it's not worth me spending five or six hours going through every single box here. Yeah. Because everything is interesting. Acid. Oh, oh put that yeah. back. <laughs> there are hundreds of items secreted in this pile of shop fittings. Some good. They're worth money. These okay. aren't. And some um, not. Um, it will be a tall order to price the contents. Because there's a lot of... Junk, and then there's little gems. Will Drew take a chance and buy the lot? It, this is this is a super fine. It would be a crime to break this up. A salvager, Drew Pritchard, is at Lechwed Slate Cavern in Gwynedd. Uh, I think you're going to get quite excited. Ooh. He's just discovered a massive collection of Victorian chemist shop fittings. This is great. I'm very pleased. Excellent. And it keeps getting better. No, there's there's more through more through here actually. I think there's a few more bits in in here. Watch watch What's... watch your feet. There's a bit of glass. This is some old bits of sort of wood and no. this that. Yeah, it's a cute thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's just people love this pieces. These would these would have just sat on the counters. Right. Super. Even the door. Oh really? Yep. And then you've got all the more back bar here. Yeah. This is, a, this is more of the back the bar, bottom. the back fittings. And then you've even got the sign, J. Lloyd Jones. J. Lloyd Jones, J. Lloyd Jones. Excellent. It's a complete, all, all it's from a complete the shop. chemist shop. Fantastic. Well, yeah, if you've got a client called J. Lloyd Jones, that would be very No, handy, but I've got it? somebody <laughs> who'll want all this. <laughs> you, you could put this into a museum. You really could. And the best thing is we've got bottles with J. Lloyd-Jones on it, and now we've got the sign with J. Lloyd-Jones, and we've even got the front door that says chemists. It's incredibly complete. Next, Michael takes them to the warehouse, where there's even more stored. This is also an original 19th century splitting mill, um, where the men would have worked splitting the slates. Right, now... So as you can see, this is, this is a big old... Mill building. Are you still using this? Uh, yes, this, this area is used to make slates flooring slabs. Bar. So, big bar big, there again. Big, big sort of counter area, yeah. Okay. Uh, another glass display another case. Dish. Um, that's a rather intriguing thing. Oop. Vanessa Williams bookseller. Williams Ellis. Uh, shop in London, I think it was. Um, 
the family are still involved in the, in the quarry, and I think I think this came from a, a member of the Williams Ellis family. And who, they don't want it. No, I mean I, I did. I, to be honest, I did I did check it with them because I, I, I wondered. But you know, so it seems like it's quite a special thing in a way. It is. It's a super thing. Just a second. It's an original sign. Right. To be, to be designed as a book. This has got a lot of age to it. Mm. Mm. There is a wonderful timber English folk art bookseller's sign. It's got a extremely simple steelwork gallery to the top. It's all part of the collection. So that, that can go if you're, if, yes, if please. you're interested. Yeah, no, I'd like that. Can we, tea? can we tip it forward? I want to see if there's actually, if it shows anything underneath it, because you'd walked underneath it. Oh, of yes. course, yes. There you go. Oh, look. Yeah, yeah, pages. That's good. That makes it for me. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? Because you can really see the yeah. book shape. There's some um, later paintwork on that. Oh, um, right. But some, some an original is... sign right. with later painting. Still. OK. Very interesting. So we've got another couple of bars. This one is been, this has been made up. See? It's an old chapel pew panel there, and then an old top, and then they've put some skirting in it. That's quite decent, though. Mm-hmm. So that one you think is possibly it's, a real one, as it were? That's a real one. That's made up, but it's right. made up well enough that it can be sold. Coming up to the sort of top warehouse where the old splitting shed, and they've got more of the same, but the bigger pieces that wouldn't fit in that shed. It's an almost impossible task to value the chemist shop as a bulk buy. But amongst the bric-a-brac, items of note include several mahogany display cabinets, four shop counters, a number of shelving units, a shop till and the original shop door. Drew has to take all this into account when making a bid. So, uh, we need to start talking money. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm about the... for absolutely everything. So mm -hmm. this, that, that, the bits of carcasses, which are mm -hmm. no use, that, th these two bars, um, the back bar thing here, all of the pieces down there, everything, the whole lot, 3,000 quid. OK. Um... I think that's a decent start, but I mean, I know what I'm trying to do with the money, and you know, I was hoping for, you know, I was hoping for nearer four because that would actually get me sorted with what I need to do. I can't come up much. No. I can't come up much. No. Purely because I'm going to have to send two, my, get two more guys here mm -hmm. and another couple of vans to get everything out. It's going to take two trips. There's 400 quid. Okay. Um, and then it's a little bit of an unknown quantity. Right. Just a bit because um, I can't see everything out and mm. there's an awful lot of rot in some of it. Right. So I'll go to 3250 and we'll buy it all and we'll take the lot. OK. Yeah? If you're taking it all, fantastic. Wonderful. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank right. Who's taking it all? Well, you know, obviously there's a cafe on site, so it's going <laughs> to be you and Gavin. And, <laughs> <laughs> and whoever else is on that. <laughs> And the cavalry is called upon, in the lone shape of Gavin, to help pack up the enormous hall. Today, fabulous. I am 20 minutes from home. I'm in a beautiful, stunning industrial area of North Wales. Um, and we have found something extraordinary right on my doorstep. Couldn't be much better. It's been fascinating, I have to say. I mean, it's been really nice to actually find out what some of the things were. Um, and I'm really pleased that we've managed to clear out a couple of rooms so we can get on with the things we need to get on with. Right, that's the other van going. So there you go. Cool. Well, we've filled two vans, sort of. That one's not completely full. That right. one's absolutely rammed. Fantastic. Um, so we've good. got plenty of stuff. Um, good, good, good. Thank Marvelous. you very much. Real pleasure. Marvelous. And you. Thank Lovely you. Lovely to meet you. Good to meet you too. Cheers. We shall see you again. Yeah, see you thank later. you very much. Bye bye. Go on, Oh, God. I didn't realise the site was so vast. 
It's massive, isn't it? It's absolutely huge. Amazing what they've done with it. Are you happy with your small purchases of the day? I, I am. That is a great haul. It's been a long time since we went. Right, we'll have everything. Two van loads later, they're back in Conway. There's a lot in there. Mm. Who's we're, driving tea? Yeah, we're closing this. That's... Hello. Hello. Oh. That looks... Brace yourself. ...as though it's not empty. you like this. Nick, <laughs> Gavin, one of the best? Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> and this one. I thought you were joking. No. A complete Victorian chemist shop. From a mine? From the high street in Bliner. All oh. of it. Everything. Right down to... The uh, till? Tablets, the tills, unopened bottles of Lucozade and Lou Roll, you name it, we've got it. So there's some gems, actually. This is my particular favourite pieces. It's this little thing here. Look at that. This is unbelievable. Really, this is yeah. a George Iron pigeon. Hole. I love that. Isn't that fabulous? It's still got all of the receipts and the stamps oh, and everything in it. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Can we go. Okay. Step. Okay, on Gav. Step. Onto the tail lift. Or on oh, the floor? oh. On the floor. Okay, Gav. Uh, Mind fingers. Come down from there. Pair of. Pair. 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 A pair. Have <laughs> it. Yeah. We good. Yeah. Okay, and down there. Oh. And down. Excellent. I like that, lads. Look. <laughs> Closed. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, it's just... What like time capsule. Got a little museum here. Yeah. Do we mm. sell it as a complete unit or do we break it up? It's worth a hell of a lot more money. It broken up? As a complete unit. Oh, do you think? Yep. It's a big unload for the team, but Drew has some good news. And I mentioned it to a very well-known chef that we do a lot with, and uh, he's interested in the entire thing, the whole thing. So we're just going to put it roughly together and, and then fire him off a couple of photographs, see if there's any interest. Go back to this one's level with that one a bit. So you can sort of... Right, now, see if those units will go together somehow on the top there. There'd have been a, an infill piece between it, so that's the end, yeah? Is that every single bit? No, there's more bits everywhere. Okay. Well, I love the counters. Mm. See, there's another door. I love this. I love this, this. Just give it a general wipe and then we can photograph it. This is good because I couldn't see it when it was in situ. It was just, there was nothing there. So to see what we've got, it's not bad at all. And it adds up to quite a lot. So I'll whiz these photographs off to our guy, see if he wants it. If he does, we'll do a deal. And ideally, sell it to him as it is and just spin it, get rid of it. On to the next one. Shut the way for a second, guys. I just want to um, just get a quick photograph of the whole thing. 